nirmal let's proceed ahead with your snap for material science uh, related to uh, the HL. issue of hcl right so uh, tell me uh, have you done any kind of project or internship related to material science no sir like my project was vertical axis wind turbine sir uh, design okay. simulation fabrication vertical axis wind turbine okay. mm-hmm. so regarding material science i have gone through that material selection and all Mm-hmm. and uh, i did uh, part of uh, 3d printing and okay. prototyping and all so can you tell me that turbine blades uh, what kind of material they are made up of like uh, which turbine steam turbine or high uh, you or tell me any turbine which you have worked on gas okay, turbine sir, like, steam turbine yeah okay gas turbine steam turbine if you are talking about that high temperature application turbines it basically called super alloys it's a general term uh, or otherwise to be specific it is called pneumonic alloys sir Okay. Pneumonic alloys are used for steam turbines. Okay. Why this alloying element is added in the steel for turbine? Pardon, sir. Why this alloying element is added? Which ah, alloying pardon, element? Yeah. A uh, nickel and um, chromium. Hmm. Uh, nickel is eighty percent nickel, and it consists of chromium as twenty uh, percent, sir. I think. Uh, uh, to convert into some alloying element in steel and their contribution in the properties like what nickel gives you what molybdenum gives you what chromium gives you some uh, alloying elements and what is their uh, you know contribution in the mechanical properties they provide in the okay steel. sir um if you take uh, sulfur and phosphorus sir the machinability of the steel get increased mm-hmm. and if you take molybdenum that uh, Uh, basically that uh, endurance strength will increase if we take vanadium uh, the hardness property got increase and uh, if it is chromium uh, the corrosion property the corrosive strength got increase so if i give you spring steel which okay, alloying sorry. element should you add in spring steel uh, nickel and uh, nickel and molybdenum sir why because uh, it should have a high toughness also and the spring should be having a, uh, it should not break sir like so that's why and it break should be have uh, it should withstand uh, so so you must have seen stress strain diagram right yes sir so what kind of properties a spring should have from stress strain diagram okay um, it should be having uh, it should be resilient which means uh, the area the resilient means uh, the energy absorbed in the, the elastic region sir so that it can uh, uh, resilient is nothing but that resistance to deformation or the, the the tendency to come back to its original position which is a necessary property for a spring okay yes sir and, uh, can you tell me if i am using uh, steel in the blade or cutter or scissor uh, you know yes sir then what kind of properties alloying element should be added if i am using steel in a blade. knife i think high hardness it should be we should increase that high hardness which has a surface property sir mm. so for cutting especially cutting we, we should uh, increase uh, that uh, hardness value of that material so uh, i think we should we, we should do some uh, like especially that heat tra- treatment process like that if i add tungsten in the steel what properties yes, uh, increase hot hardness sir hmm. hot hardness will increase sir. so how do you differentiate high- hardness from hot hardness um hardness is a uh, resistance to uh, get the surface cracking or resistance to surface indentation sir but hot hardness means it's uh, kind of uh, dependent to high temperature applications like uh, at high temperature how it withstand with that external forces and all sir take it sir. okay uh, how do you define nirmal uh, this uh, annealing process annealing is a heat treatment process it is basically used to relieve stresses from the materials okay and uh, what kind of annealing do we have uh, there are three type four types of annealing sir like a full process annealing process annealing and spheroidized annealing and diffusion annealing mm. what is spheroidizing spheroidizing nothing but sir uh, heating that 
iron uh, heating that steel part into high temperature and um, we, we are allowing some time to get homogeneous material so that uh, the sphere kind of uh, particles will form so that uh, the ductility of the material get increased uh, nirbhul why normalizing is done uh normalizing is done sir like it's a heat treatment process it is used to increase the surface of uh, because it's a, the cooling rate is very high in case of normal normalizing so fine pearlite is formed so that surface of the material get hardened especially so that normalizing is done sir what is the product of normalizing process it's a fine pearlite sir and how the martensite is formed um martensite is formed. okay sir when when we raise that uh, temperature to at asnosing temperature high temp more than uh, oscillating temperature and if we increase that rate of cooling rate or more if you if the rate of cooling rate is higher than critical cooling rate and uh, if it it will reach that uh, if we cooling below that martensitic temperature then we will get martensites but is it not normalizing so there is also air quenching pardon sir is it not through normalizing no so normalizing i think uh, in presence of uh, 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 i think uh, air or uh, medium sir like uh, in uh, how not in air is formed? how bend it is formed okay um, okay uh, if we, uh, the, we we should uh, cool that uh, material in a higher critical cooling rate and if we keep it at the temperature which is above martensitic temperature and it will reach that cooling curve ttt curve what is that process bionate. called nirmal uh, that bionate formation sir yeah i think os tempering sir yeah and what is mart tempering mart tempering is uh, uh, heating that martensite into higher temperature and cooling it slowly and uh, we will get to uh, there at high temperature tempering and to uh, have you heard about uh, stepped quenching yes sir i have heard sir uh, like um, um, i know sir but i am not able to recall it sir i know it sir like it's part by part step by step we have to quench it to a certain degree of temperature then we will again so the curve will be like step by step in tt tt curve it's called step but i don't remember it Okay, so what do you understand by perlite? Perlite is a mixture of uh, alpha ferrite and uh, uh, cementite, sir, and it is formed at a temperature of seven twenty three degrees Celsius, and uh, at a composition of point two percent, point eight percent carbon, a point eight percent at uh, iron carbon diagram, and it consists of point eight eight percent alpha and point one two percent is of uh, cementite and it is a laminate plate structure okay nirul what is the percentage of carbon in mild steel okay mild steel sir okay it, i think uh, 0. 0.2 to 0.3% no, maximum so uh, normally we draw stress strain diagram taking mild steel as a you know material yes sir yes, why sir. that is done why not aluminum or cast iron I, i think we can draw it for any every material sir but for mild steel the prop that uh, yield strength and that properties are clearly vis visible sir so that's why we are using mild steel so if i give you stress strain diagram of mild steel okay sir from that diagram how can you calculate its uh, shear strength okay uh, okay you, you are okay we can, it's generally that shear strength is a half of yield strength sir like half of the tensile strength generally or otherwise we can do torsion test and all or we, even we can give, do shear test in utm also we will can you that. tell me the kind of uh, material we use in aeroplane manufacturing yes sir uh, in aero like that body part is generally made of uh, duralumin it's an alloy of aluminium and the wings are generally made up of uh, composites mm, okay which composite carbon fiber composite sir what is the advantage of uh, this composite carbon okay it, it is having a, uh, especially if you are taking that wings or the carbon fiber composite it's having low density and high strength so that we can manage that uh, weight because uh, because especially comparing to aerospace industry the weight is the main criteria so that's why composites are used okay if you are asking about composites 
it is a mixture of uh, oh, uh, it's it's a multi-phase alloy sir composite it's a multi-phase alloys and these multi-phase alloys consist it's an artificially made multi-phase alloys and it consists of properties a uh, significant properties of all the components it is having it is called composite sir Uh, can you tell me about ceramics something normal uh, okay so ceramics are uh, uh, made up of combination of uh, metals and non metals sir and it is uh, it is generally to get the properties of both metals and non metals because metals are uh, hard in uh, room temperature and non metals are generally gaseous in room temperature so it's kind of uh, alloy, uh, it's not an alloy it's kind of uh, can you give some examples of ceramics Uh, like the examples of day to day life ceramics which are the material ceramics okay. in your room presently you are sitting in some room give me the examples of ceramics in your room a glass uh, uh, glass is a mug a uh, mug is ceramics and uh, and tiles floor tiles ah yes sir floor tiles are ceramics and uh, 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 yes sir floor tiles are ceramics and tiles okay. of walls are ceramics okay nirman let me give you the feedback So, sure, the uh, level is good of material science. Uh, uh, keep Thank you, sir. Improving it. There's a Thank marathon you, video of four hours on your PD education. Material science. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, watch that video. Sure, Plus, sir. stress train diagram. Pe there are a couple of videos. Okay, sir. On your PD education. Sure, sir. Stress train diagram and marathon material science video. Please watch that sure, once sir. again. Sure, sir. Since your level is good, let's take it to the next level. Sure, uh, sir. When I'm saying good, there's a lot of scope of improvement. Thank you, sir. I'll say the level is uh, good to start with. So, sure, uh, sure. like uh, alloying elements, you're getting confused in certain places here and there. Just okay, increase sir. the level, and you can okay, make it sure, as, uh, your uh, favorite uh, subject. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But you need to revise it, right? It's a very. Sir, can I ask you one doubt? Like, uh, is it material science is important at HCL interview, sir? So yes, because say, materials these guys deal with materials. Yes, that is important. So can I say it as my favorite? Yes, subject? you can say, and they will ask you question also from there. Sir, I'm say. thinking, uh, um, uh, like, what are the subjects important? Sir, basically, like, um, what is your engineering background? Mechanical engineering, sir. Thermodynamics, fluid yes, mechanics, strength yes, of material, heat transfer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So material science. This yeah, is this. Material science, you can say. Okay, sir. So machine design and all, no need, sir. Not no, no. For machine design will not be required if you do strength because. Of material. Okay, sir. Because it's a HCL manufacturing plan, sir. So that's why I'm asking. No need, sir. No, no, no. That's not required. 